Welcome to everyone. Today is Kopi with Ben's time. That's right. It's your daily, rather weekly topic. And today I have a guest speaker who is Dr. Yudara. And we're going to talk something about unzip the facts. The Zen Z guide to penis health and STI prevention. So we are doing a recording version tonight. And let's invite our guest speaker, Dr. Yudara. Hello, Doctor. Hi, Vance. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you for joining us very late today. And I'm sure looks like you're not uh, at home right now. No, I'm still at the office. Okay. Thank you, Doctor, for joining us tonight. Um, doctor, before we go on, you want to do a quick introduction so that uh, we can jump into the questions and the topic today? No problem. Uh... Uh, my name is Dr. Yudara Kularatna. I'm a consultant physician um, who's practicing uh, in Singapore um, under Singh Health Group. But after COVID, uh, I take a step back and then started my own um, startup after seeing how the world needs a little bit more adventurous physicians, especially on the diagnosis side. So he Health is a um, digital diagnostic startup where we help uh, men to diagnose sexual health issues early. But I'm happy to share more later during the questions. Thank you for joining us, Doctor. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you. Today's topic is going to be very exciting. Um, a lot of time, um, it's not a stigma, but people are a bit shy to talk about this. Uh, before we even jump into the topic, is there any particular reason why, Doctor, people don't want to talk about sexual health or even, you know, the pennies or the vagina? You know, a very, very, um, you know, people are very shy and, you know, don't want to use the words. Is there any particular reason why, Doctor? I'm not sure why is the reason, but um, it is a taboo. Um, you said it may be not a taboo, but it is a taboo. Believe me, in Singapore, even when you pronounce just now the penis word, yeah. the word comes a little bit lower sound. This is how we <laughs> in the society. Wow. wow. <laughs> you, you caught me there. Of course. That's my wow. job, right? So, th so that's yeah, the so that's the, that's the low key stigma we are talking about. Actually, social media don't talk about it, and then the, yeah, at family, yeah. even this a proper English word to tell in scientific means, people don't talk about it, and people use different words, and then this is how we've been brought up as a society. But this is not right. We have yeah, to be very straightforward. That's why I told penis as loud and clear so okay. that this gets across. Right. So we are going to use an emphasis. On that particular word louder than ever all right um thank you doctor i mean like i mentioned to uh, to all the audiences today uh, that we are live in spotify youtube and facebook and linkedin as well so it's a recorded version but you can actually listen to them anytime at your conveniences um doctor so let's jump into the topic today uh let's unzip it <laughs> not zip it um but can you provide an overview of these common uh, stis that affect young adults especially or rather overall and actually how they can impact the penny self yeah actually it's not limited to young adults anybody oh. can get it and surprisingly we are seeing some parts of the world um, elder population are getting stds now so yeah. but let me um unsip it um, as you said uh, uh, what are the common things so i would broadly put it in few categories so that um, you can understand the biggest category I usually put it, which is the commonest in Singapore, is what you call discharges. So when you look at it, you will see an abnormal discharge. Sometimes it looks like a white color, but it's not the usual one you would have. Uh, and some color, sometimes, of course, it can be thick, yellowish, brownish, greenish, you name it, all the colors, but abnormal discharge from the penis. These things can be related to chlamydia, gonorrhea, and a few other things definitely you need to get treated. The other big group I put it is you get wounds on the penis, which is um, herpes um, and syphilis. And these ones, whether it's painful or painless, you will have a small wound. So sometimes it can be actually big wounds. Surprisingly, these things can get cured by itself, but it will come back and hurt you again. So you need to again treat these things. The third right. group I put it is the growths which is the commonest, um, very common in Singapore also, um, so-called HPV, human papilloma virus derived uh, genogenital um, warts. And right. again, people think this is um, non-sinister, not going to happen anything, but no, you are wrong. This can actually can cause cancer and all the other problems in the future. The last right. group is the ones which you cannot actually see. The HIV is the leading uh, member in that group. So these are the common groups so that actually if you can understand if there's abnormal discharge, abnormal growth, or there's a wounds, 
or if you have um, not so safe practices, you need to get tested. That's the key message. Right. right. And also, doctor, is it because we are living in a tropical country and you mentioned a couple of other viruses that, you know, that uh, affect and that area, it's always tight. It is not free at all. Though I think the only time we are free is either we are going to the loo or either having a shower. I mean, you can't be just going out nakedly. But, um, but is it because of that, that tropical country that we live in, there's a lot of humid, especially in that non-exposed area? Thanks, man. Actually, it's not. You do get fungal infections on the penis. We mostly don't consider them as actual true um, STIs, sexual right. transmitted infections. But this is very common. As you said, um, when boys are doing army, national service, they get it right. because they have to wear the same clothes for many, right. many hours. And then sometimes, of yes. course, you get wet. You still cannot change it. Yes. Fungal infections are common, but that you should not be complicated or mixed. Uh, or um, um, misread it as STI or other um, other um, vice versa. So it's very right. important if you are not so sure or if you have any symptoms which is abnormal, better to get checked with a doctor. Or you can use other technological solutions which we can um, again talk. That's where the e-health is working, using artificial intelligence to get at least a better idea of what are those things. Right. Yeah, you know, doctor, I mean, also, uh, is there a particular, like, you know, annual checkup or is it like every three years once? Because, you know, for a particular, you know, like HbA1c, you know, to check your blood glucose level, you have to do every three months or once a year. But is there something like for STI or, you know, I know you you are coming from eHealth. Is there a, any recommendation or even Ministry of Health? Is there something like, you know, like adults should go and check it out like every five years once? Is there something like a guideline there? Um, that's an interesting question, man. As far as I know, in Singapore, Ministry of Health right. have no um, indication right. for how um, right. how common we, uh, or how frequent we have sex. Okay. But as far okay. as you have sex, you are exposed to uh, STIs. So right. if you're having once a year, maybe you can check once a year. Okay, I'm just kidding. Um, as far as you are sexually active, you need to get okay. tested as right. early as possible, as frequent as possible. But right. I cannot actually put a number per se so okay. it depends on um, how frequent you have sex, what kind of activities right. you are involved in the sexual activities. Is it right. high risk, low risk, whether you prote use protection all the time, is it with a single partner? All these okay. things actually matters. If you consider right. it overall as a low risk, maybe at least once a year you need to get checked. And that's right. why in the healthcare appointments, um, usually they put it as once a year or like uh, work permits, they put it as once or twice a year. Right. But if you're actively um, engaging with high-risk um, sexual yeah. behaviors right. without protection, of course, we would say every month or every three months would be the best. Thank you, doctor. Thank you for this. I mean, I mean, this is just, just, just the first question. And there are so many sub-questions to it. And I'm sure there are more to come in. Uh, yeah. For viewers I mean, who are watching... Sorry, Doc. Yeah, I mean, I can add here, right? This is my life's mission now. Um, what okay. he helped us is we are creating right. digital tools to truly understand whether you want to do tests, when you want to do tests, and how frequent okay. you need to do testing. And some of these diseases, actually, we can diagnose or detect from the phone itself. You know, yeah. you might not, for example, HPV yeah. viral warts. You can detect right. it very well. We have close to about 90% or more than 90% accuracy detecting. You don't need to do anything at all. And this is in the phone. There's no barrier. It's going you to be very interesting, doctor, because we are going to talk about the AI technology as well. Because AI yes. technology yes. has went into the medical field. And also, Correct. as we all well know, that AI has also pretty much went into a lot of places, or a lot of uh, sectors and uh, environments as well. So, you know, doctor, I need to share with you this, right? Sure, um, sure, sure. A weeks ago, I was at uh, our airport. All right, so there isn't any cleaners. There's all robots are moving around. And then me being the most mischievous fella, I stand in front of it and he just gave me a warning. Please stay away, you know. So I, I, I think um, AI is becoming a part of it. We are definitely going to touch you, ask you on that. Uh, but right now, let me just go into the second question as well. So, Doc, so I mean, as we are talking about STIs and as, as well, um, but probably we will now move it to the Gen Z. What are some key practices and habits where these Gen Z individuals should adopt to maintain optimal penis health and prevent STIs? Yeah, it's a solid question, Vance. So if you look at it, um, this, this area is being not innovated 
um, significantly for the last 20, 30 years. And I think about 20 years ago, WHO came up with the principal so-called ABCD approach of STI prevention. A stands for abstinence and B stands for barriers. But if you look at Gen Cs, Sadly, right. none of these things are actually working. And um, we were talking about it, right? Like, so if you ask a 16-year-old, 18-year-old young guy to not to have sex, but of course, the whole society is, the all the social media, all the things he see, he's having this curious nature about what the sex is about. And then instead of we asking them not to have sex, we should guide them of how to have sex safer. So that's why the strategy of A is failing miserably because... Right. That's not what the youngsters' hormones are against it. And we know very well. We all done funny things when you are young. But if we yes. get the idea of how to do these things safely, that's how we should approach. In the last later part of the discussion, I'll touch what we're proposing for the new ABCs. But okay. I would say, so the most important thing is you have to understand, you have to understand is there other ways and means of understanding risk? Because this is not something people talk, right? If you right. don't, how do you understand these things when you're 16, 18? Yes, we do have a sexual health education in Singapore and most of the right. countries and world. But is there anything more we can do which is personalized? What you've been right. taught in the school as sexual health is a very general thing. But what that means to me, what that means to my own penis, how do I understand these things? That's right. where the technology can come in. There are many right. other companies working on um, this area with us there are AI tools who would thought AI will be <laughs> involved with the penis right in the first place yeah maybe in the airport but now it's also doing things that's how it is um, so it will be able to actually screen for problems it will be able right. to risk stratify them it'll now the chatbots are super smart and they can actually tell you what to do what not to do and so my mission is actually to guide them this new generation gen c's okay how they consume the uh, information, where they consume right. the information, how right. they use the technology to um, use their own advantage and, of course, communicate them with the other parties very clearly. And we are not saying not to have fun. Have fun, but safely. We will tell you how to do it and bring all the technological solutions to you. That's what you do. Beautiful. Uh, well said there, Doctor. Uh, for viewers who are watching us from uh, Instagram as well, we are right now not live. We actually a recording version right now. Um, we will be uh, posting it into our social media, which is your yeah, Spotify, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook as well. Uh, Kobe events is a uh, Wednesdays 9 p.m. But today we are doing a late show, and it's a record version. And today with me is Dr. Yudara, and we are talking everything about sexual health, but particularly to the human or rather the male penis. Have I said that loud, doctor? Yep, that's loud enough. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's not what like penis. Now it's a penis, right? <laughs> <laughs> Doc, I mean, as we are speaking about this topic right now, I have not seen AIDS. So is AIDS also a part of these STIs that we are going to talk about today? It is, it is. HIV AIDS is um, one disease in different stages and it right. is STI considered. And um, there are a lot of innovation happened in STI, right. sorry, HIV right. and AIDS. But sadly, right. the, the rest of the STI is kind of forgotten. Yeah. But what I think is we have to take it as a whole and then approach right. head on to tackle this problem. Definitely right. HIV is the difficult one because it doesn't have symptoms. It's always in right. the blood for until like things are really bad. Right. Thank you, doctor. So we'll move into the next question. Um, also, Doc, could you discuss the importance of the regular STI testing? I mean, we just talked about it. I mean, if you are heavily active in sexual, then I think, you know, if you're not protected, and then I think your frequent of testing should be more. But under the STI testing and what young adults need to know about the testing process, I mean, most of them are worried, what happens if I have it? But of course, your activity level in the sexual part is high, but then you're worrying about these side effects or rather the effects are going to come into you. Um, so what is this testing process? Can we talk a little bit on the testing process, doctor? Yep, I, I would love that. This is the part where I come in. So last time, again, you have to have blanket things because like we have a discussion and I said, okay, get tested every three months. But does that belongs to each person in our society? No, because right. each right. person's the risk appetite is completely different. One person right. might be having sex for every two months, three months. One person may be having twice a day and one person might be having a one partner. One person may be having five partners. Does the risk same for everybody? Obviously, no. So how am I supposed to come with the answer to tell, okay, this is the regime I should be telling you. But we thought two steps ahead. What we thought is, okay, if you can share this information, 
with our technological solutions like he health we can actually come up with personalized testing regimes how frequent you need to do what is the risk appetite or the risk exposure you've been exposed to stis even for hiv we can actually risk stratify some of these things of course some of the technology is available some of the technologies are building but as someone in the gen z exploring the sex for the first time what we would say is use the technology as a solution to understand yourself understand your risk and then of course find the right testing solutions and regimes for you i would say generalize um the rule at least about every 3 to 6 months you need to get tested if you are sexually active and uh, doctor where this testing can be done Okay, this this is very important. Um, we are very lucky in Singapore. We have a very good um, organized system, and uh, we have a government system which is um, catering very well. Prices are super low, and of course, you can use a uh, Medisave. Uh, and uh, we have a DSA clinic in Kalantan, okay. and then we have a national uh, NUHS system. They have a STI HIV clinic, and then of course. Um, there's another one in the National Skin Center. They have STI HIV clinic. So these are the government ones. And of course, I'm not going to mention the private sector names, but there are a few groups which is very famous, focusing on HIV STIs. And of course, I have to tell also, we are also starting our own clinic group um, with the partners that we will be providing full set of um, HIV and STI care and uh, with privacy security. And of course, you can manage and follow up with our app also. Thank you, doctor. You know, doctor. I mean, I mean, I mean, even for sometimes when you do your tumor markers, or even when you want to do some um, testing, or you know, the health testing, uh, people actually quite worried. What if, right? Um, but, but I mean, doctor. I mean, if it's a good thing because if you don't go and check, you never know. And if you get checked, and if you know your symptom, you can do a lot of stuff to prevent it or to manage it. Um, for under the STI, I mean, when we are, because we are particularly talking about men health, men's health, which is a penis, um, if there's signs and symptoms, if a man notice there's a growth or there is fungus or you know there's painful sensations, burning sensation during urinations and kind of stuff, do you think he should get worried and and he take you know I, I will go next week. I mean that's what happens. I go following week. You know, let me Google up and then get more information before I see a doc. I'm shy to show the doctor my penis. You know, sometimes all these factors are not talked about. So it's a good opportunity to talk today. It is, it is. Yeah. Once, let me share a small story which I experienced in okay. my own um, in the hospital. So um, there was this lady, 50-something, not old, um, right. came up with a breast lump. And then when I examined, it's a full-blown um, stage 4 cancer. And we are living in Singapore and we are a developed, really solid um, healthcare system. I ask her why you did not come to hospital until things are very bad. She yeah. said, I was the simple answer. I, I, she said, I was shy. And then I told her, this looks like to me is a late stage cancer. Do you understand? Then she suddenly started crying. Right. Then I, of course, give time to, you know, slowly come to a realization that what's going on. Then I ask, do you understand the gravity of it? She said, yes. Right. If I actually knew that it's possibly a cancer, I would have 100% come. But I thought it will just go away. And every right. day I thought it will go away, but it never go away. So same thing comes to the men, when it comes to the penis health. When people see something, say, oh, it'll nothing serious, it will go off. But at some point when they realize when they're trying to have babies, they might not get yeah. babies. Then it's too late. Or like right. some other things like HP related cancers, it can actually lead to cancer. Then if I tell you that you might even have to do an operation to remove your penis, people will be, you know, like, I would rather Shop. die. So yeah. these things can be prevented. <laughs> Yeah. Obviously, whenever you see something, best is, of course, go see a doctor. But if it's not what we suppose is, right. at least adopt technologies which can give personalized information. Once you get that information, if it tells you, oh, bloody hell, you have maybe herpes, then yeah. people are like, okay, I need to go to hospital, get it checked. So when you right. hear that word, yes. But if you don't hear that things, they keep thinking, oh, it's nothing serious. And they will, you know, like what you said, keep postponing and thinking that it will go off. I think as a society, where we need to come in is give this information to the youth, personalized, not blanket. And it has to be matched to the each person's and what they have. And right. based on the risk, they will tell like, okay, this is what you have. Go test it. Then people will be more 
inclined and of course we must also give them the options of doing testing anonymously and remove all the other pain points right thank you doctor thank you for that but i think that this is also leads to communication and i think that is where our next question is going to come up um i think a lot of time there's not much of a communication is happening um so how does communication play a crucial role in promoting sexual health and preventing the spread of stis uh, what strategy because we are still focusing on the gen z individual use to have open and honest conversations about sexual health what do you think about that i know it's a bit long question <laughs> no problem no problem i love it actually um, th- this is something again i'm passionate uh, when i used to teach in university i always say you have right. to understand the the receiving parties um, the behavioral patterns when right. we were um, i think when you and me we belongs to the older generation right um, yeah, at least <laughs> when our time we used to talk to people person to person but now the gen zs they don't talk to person to person they prefer yeah. the text but if i talk about exactly if i talk about communication as verbal communication that's not going to actually give them advantage i have to right. i have to talk about how the gen zs do it and we bring our technologies there where they are doing it so they are text based generation they actually right. born with the handphones i got my first handphone when i was 21 obviously that you can understand very old but now my son he's 2 years not even 2 years he understand how to go into youtube skip the right. ad find coco melon and then play yeah. it can <laughs> you believe this so that's where we need to bring the technology to the right. youth gen zs how to communicate right. answer your question so we think the text based communication need to be very well thought out have strategies right. to do it and we have right. to have short emoji based um, communication methods to, to get these things you know if you, you put go. it in the facebook and instagram i cannot put the penis word they will block it yeah. yes and then of course now we put a um, eggplant everybody knows yeah. they talk uh, about the penis <laughs> so, so the penis has become an eggplant <laughs> exactly these are the communication strategies we need to understand right right, right. so we need as to as the is uh, as the ai is evolving we humans also have to evolve to be exactly. a match of that exactly. and that right exactly so and, and the other thing is if you look at how the people used to meet last time we as youngsters we had to go right. to club or something to find a girl to talk now nobody goes and talk people like that they all do it digitally in the dating apps exactly right. so right. we need to bring technologies there you know when the youth is there we need to bring the technology mm-hmm. is there a way that we can actually promote you to be honest communicating about STI testings in a dating app those are the things we should be talking is there a way like some of the texting um, like messaging apps when you put they might be blocking so is there a way that whenever people are talking about it to auto generate right. answer said oh here are some facts about um, sexual health if it, someone asking about someone else about uh, sti these are right. the nearby sti um, centers actually we have the technology right now based on the ai to do these thing in chat apps and stuff right. but sadly I think as a society we need to accept the fact that they the youth need to get this information and the text based way is the way to get the information right. and then we have to as academics as companies as um, the general public we need to right. build these things you cannot just block everything and say oh there's no such thing happening you know oh i right. think my son have no penis problem no it's yeah. not <laughs> yeah <laughs> parents have to the... accept these things it's it's going to be a bit uh, interesting as well um which i find it um a lot of adults right either male or female um i think most of the time we can confidently say is the male i mean of course we are not biased here uh, that you know they don't want to use protected sex right they want to do unprotected and i think that actually can cause because especially if someone has multiple partners or having one night you know that's kind of stuff um is there's a higher chances of of course aids and also the stis but one should you know you know it, it, it's a discipline on an individual responsibility but if one doesn't do that i think is creating more problems to the society or eventually right because if someone have, having aids i think that's going to go through a huge not only physically mentally and emotionally as well right doc yeah it is it is so i think comes two factors one is understanding your own risk and then if you prefer to have unprotected sex for example there are medications now what you call prep pre exposure prophylaxis if you okay. take these medications actually you can stop 
transmitting HIV, STDs, yeah. some yeah. of things. Of course, uh, PrEP is very well documented for HIV, and there are PrEP antibiotics for some of the STIs also. So mm. if you think that oh, you don't want to wear condom, yes, you can use these medications. It will reduce the risk up to certain person. And the second part is, as I said, the communication. You need to tell clearly that I'm someone who's not willing to wear a condom and I've yeah. been doing the same thing so that the partner understand the risk. Okay, mm. if I to have sex with this partner, it's a slightly more risk so that yes. the partner can also decide. So that's why it's important to protect the both sides. You can protect yourself. Same time, you have to actually help to protect the other side. It's the responsibility part. Can we can we conclude this because they don't want to wear the condom is because of the pleasure increase pleasure. I mean there are a lot of scientific things there are a lot of things which is from the experience I can tell but yeah. it's again boils down to the personal things you know right some people assume that it's the pleasure but some people even don't agree that there's a difference you know right. and there are so called double blinded without knowing you ask whether there's a difference or some people right. don't so it's it's i think it's it's important for us to convince the youth for them to understand by themselves and then make the decision and again we are not here to penalize things right. and whatever they choose we have to build technologies to help them to still protect themselves that's what i'm saying right thank you doctor thank you for that we're going to take the last question doc and also that is basically about could you share some of the practical tips and strategies for overcoming barriers to practicing safe sex and to promoting overall sexual well-being among the Zen Z, but I think it should be for everyone. I 100%. Couples or, you know, you know, this is becoming very common nowadays. So I think it's uh, something that we need to talk about. Uh, actually, in my lectures, um, compared to the old WHO proposed ABCD, I've been proposing right. a new one, also right. based on ABCD. A stands for adoption. B right. stands for be responsible, C for communication, and D for destigmatize. Let right. me add a little bit about the adoption part. As I said, there are lots of technologies that are being built to get the personalized information, and some are right. even going into a level that they can detect diseases like what we do at HeHealth, right. and they can give personalized information. So adoption of these technologies in right places, like the right. dating apps, and if right. you think that these things are happening in there, you bring the technology there. And we talk right. about the communication in chat apps, you bring the technology there. And now our LLMs, large language model like OpenAI, ChatGPT, right. these things can be incorporated into Gen C communication modes. You know, whenever right. you ask something, it actually jump in and help to give right. the right answer. Yeah. Those are the ones that you call e adopt, adopt the technology. B is the responsibility part. With COVID, we all know it's not about only yourself. You cannot just say, oh, I don't want to wear a uh, mask, but government say, no, you may, must wear a mask because it yes. spreads to the others. So these right. are the responsibility part. What we say is get tested regularly and know your status. And then, of course, use barrier methods as much as possible so that you be responsible. And, of course, right. communicate these things to the opposite party clearly, you know. This is my status. I've been checking every three months. I use PrEP and I don't want to use a condom or you want to use a condom. So C is for communication. Communicate this clearly even before you think about it. And now the text base is not that difficult to tell. You know, like last time I want to tell something, I feel shy. But text base, okay, la, just send it over, you know, so that yeah. people understand. Yeah, but, but doctor, I'm going to stop you here for a while, all right? I'm just giving you a quick, uh, very uh, unprepared or rather probably you're prepared, right? You know, during a very intense moment between a couple, right? There's no time for condom, right? But do you think the guy will have the time to explain to her? You know, you know, I've been doing regular checks. I'm very responsible. Do you, I mean, <laughs> that's what yeah, I'm going to That's ask. a solid question, Wins. So I'll give you an example. In okay. some of the, especially I do work a lot of things in US. They said, okay. look, I get matched in dating app. The yeah. second message is already I'm getting a penis picture, you know. So right, these right. things can be communicated beforehand, before even you right. meet. That's okay. what I'm saying, you know. And you don't have to obviously wait until you meet. No, that's not going to happen. Right. And we have built digital technologies that when you send something, I can already scan, you know. Yeah. And talk about these things before even you do something else, before you meet, communicate right. these things clearly. That's what you do. Uh, of course, we are definitely missing part pins as adults, you know, like last time, we, those are the times we think of communicating. But no, yeah. we bring the communication much, much earlier stage mm. nowadays. Thank you, Doctor. Just, um, okay, for viewers who are watching this, thank you so much. We will definitely be uploading Dr. Yutra's 
uh, Yura's uh, interview. Uh, just stay tuned for now. Adios, amigos. I'm going to see you. Bye-bye to them. Bye-bye. Okay. Let's hang on down. Okay, um, Doctor, thank you. I mean, we have already went into um, almost about uh, well, 30 five minutes. Minutes. and 30 minutes, right? We, we, we were talking okay, about it bit. only for about uh, 20 minutes only, but uh, I think the, the topic can just jump in and go on. But before we come into the uh, end part of the uh, interesting talk, um, is there something that you would like to say for our audiences? Because I know um, this topic can literally go for hours and hours. But in a nutshell, um, as we talk about, you know, the common STIs that affect young people and, you know, what are the impacts on the penis health? Um, is there something that you want to um, tell our viewers and listeners for today? I think the most important thing is um, what we put it as ABCD. Um, so um, do not hesitate to talk about these things. So first thing, be loud. Be loud about it, talk about it, and then understand yourself. It's not about others. Right. Understand yourself. And then, of course, seek help whenever you need. So right. technology is built in for every step of things we talk about. And then right. please use it. That's all we are asking. Right. Thank you, Doctor. I mean, um, we, we, we have covered the first part. I'm sure there's going to be many more parts uh, that we will have with Dr. Yudra. And I think after your trip that you come back to Singapore, I think we will engage more. And we can dive into a live uh, segment as well to gather more information from you and your expertise and to all our viewers as well. So thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much for your time today. I know it's almost, wow, 11.20 and you're still in your office. Uh, thank you so much. And we're definitely no going problem. to catch you up for a coffee. Yep. <laughs> Definitely, Lance. Uh, have a good day. Thanks for hosting me. Um, it's been lovely and not everyone's willing to talk about this topic. So it's very important, but I would love to do a live session and to take some ask me anything questions. Uh, you know, um, I'm pretty sure a lot of youth have questions. Next time we can try that. Yes. Looking forward. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor.